Hello guys and welcome to Rafi TV. This is a video for Firefall patch 0.8 and I will be showing you my Firecat build, the Flying Cat. This build focus is around mobility to get the best possible mobility with your Inferno Dash and Soaring Afterburner. With that you can fly around on the skies of New Eden without even having to use your jump jets to do. I will hover the items now so you can take a glimpse of the build on the two tips. I will get back on the items later after we do the perks and I will show you the blueprints for this build. Note that we don't use an HTM at the moment both full air bomb and shockwave are not worth the constraint cost and the cores they need to use. So let's see the perks. With these perks I focus on mobility and DPS. I don't use perks for defense, this is a very glass cannon build you need to be able to get in and out of combat constantly to stay alive. For mobility, the sprinter perk, the prototype pistons, and the quick pivot servos. With that we get one extra meter per second and we get extra sprint speed too. Together with our servos we will be at 9 meters per second and that's pretty comfortable especially in this build that will be flying most of the time. With full injectors we get a little more zip on our jump jets when we need them. It's a pretty nice perk for 5 points and increase our mobility a little. And last but not least I have the Tiger. Reduce the cooldown of movement abilities by 2.5 seconds. With this we will have uh, an Inferno Dash and an Afterburner with 9.5 seconds with 8 seconds glider wings with the Kulux wings. This means we will be able to fly forever. The cooldowns will be up before the glider wings expire. And for DPS we go with reload speed. The Thermal Cannon has a very short clip and you reload a lot, increasing your reload speed will get you more DPS in the end. On the, ten, on the 10 point perks, Necrotic Bite increases damage to Humanoid by 10% with a pretty solid perk. It increases our damage in all the Chosen, the Tanken, just don't affect Gaia creatures. The other option I could be see used here is bio blending but I don't think it's better be because you take a lot of damage in the end you'll be taking damage you will rarely be at a hundred percent and necrotic bite will get a better DPS overall epicenter increase the damage of our armalite with this we get 15 extra points of damage, it's a pretty nice increase, make our burn sting faster. And Soul Shot. This is a very nice perk, it gives you a short burst of speed. What I like to do is to lead with my primary fire to get the proc and after that I just fire the outer, the out fire 3 times. I got a buddy pretty nice burst. As for the gear, let's go for the blueprints. This is a pretty nice add-on guys, full craft. With this you can plan your gear ahead. Let's start with the thermal cannon. Pretty nice damage. A nice splash radius don't need more than this, you shouldn't be missing this much and a good clip size too, 15 is pretty good especially with our extra reload speed
Immolate, nice damage, good recharge, some good range too, and the duration I tank it a little because in 12 seconds everything will be dead most likely. This is a pretty heavy ability. I used 5 extra cards on this one to be able to get all these nice stats. The afterburner, 12 seconds cooldown, 45 meters per second strength, pretty nice afterburners, and the Codex Wing gave 340 something extra mass to get the 8 seconds. The Inferno Dash, some nice damage too and 12 seconds cooldown, so it pairs up with your afterburner. The effect radius I think is a little bugged at the moment. I ended up with 3.13 and I think I was going for 5 with Fallcraft and somehow the, sp the splash radius on the Inferno Dash crafted a lower amount. This is also a pretty heavy ability in both mass and power. I used 4 extra cards on this one. Our passive incinerator, 65 damage, a good amount of damage for the constraint cost. Debuff, 5 seconds, the same thing with Immolate more than 5 seconds burning, things will be already killed. You kill it with your weapon. It's a good amount of, te of time to let them burn. Our plating 2350 HP not too much I would like to get a little more here, but it's not needed, we can save some constraints on this piece to get better stats on the others. The health per second is also tanked, 7 HPS, you don't need more than this one. You will be taking damage, but you will most likely be taking damage and getting out. If Only if you are cornered you will be taking constant damage, so it's important to not to die. But after that you can use a health pack and get back in action. The servos, here is a piece that is pretty nice to save some mass. 6 meters per second, 0.6 meters jump height. 228 mass, pretty light servos. And with our perks we can get a nice speed anyway. And lastly the jump jets. Some good energy, it's good to be able to use it for a, an extended amount of time. Some medium recharge that we have our perk to get 20% more. And with that we'll, bet, we'll get decent recharge. Air sprint tanked, you don't use air sprint a lot because you'll probably be flying in the situations that you need air sprint. And if you need it, you can still use it the jetpacks can take the hit. Some tips guys when crafting your gear it's important to plan ahead, get a spreadsheet and get the full set of gear planned before crafting any piece. And when you start crafting it, craft your most important pieces of gear first. They will use the highest amount of constraints the spreadsheet that you will make will tell what your highest and heaviest pieces are and that's where you put your extra cars and it's important to craft them, them first because sometimes you will make some little changes while you craft you don't have all the mats that you need and the stats change and in the last pieces that you are crafting you maybe have to take some mass, take some power to be 
under the equipment resource pool. Here you can see I have 7,673 from 7,680, so right amount, right on the same amount. Let's take this Firecat for some flying tests so you guys can see the cooldowns in action. You can see that the Afterburner has some pretty nice strength. If you notice the cooldown on the abilities come before the glider rings end so you don't have to use your jump jets all you have to do is to maneuver around and keep using your abilities to fly anywhere there are no limits for the flying cat you don't need an LGV you don't need a portable glider you can only use your abilities and fly to the sky thanks for watching guys stay tuned on my youtube channel for the latest videos for firefall and smite Checking out soon.